So far, we talked in detail about the disorders that can lead to peripheral uh, vestibular disorders, uh, some conditions that lead to central vestibular disorders. Now we should talk about some clinical tests that can uh, detect the vestibular functions. So in these clinical tests, we will talk about the spontaneous nystagmus and fistula test. We will talk about Romberg test gait analysis and post pointing, past pointing and falling test. And then we will also talk about positional test and test of cerebellar dysfunction. So first the spontaneous nystagmus. What is nystagmus? Nystagmus is involuntary rhythmical oscillatory movement of the eye. So uh, it's the involuntary rhythmical movement of the eyeball and it may be horizontal, vertical or rotatory in three directions. Horizontal nystagmus, it can be vertical nystagmus or it can be in the rotatory form. So it's the involuntary. Patient has no control on this nystagmus. So it's involuntary rhythmical movement of the eyeball or eye. So what are the different degrees of uh, nystagmus? When we talk, we have first degree nystagmus. In first degree nystagmus, it is a weak nystagmus and is present when patient looks in the direction of fast component. So when the patient looks towards the fast component, this is the nystagmus that occurs only during that time. Then in the second degree nystagmus, it is stronger as compared to first degree and is present when patient looks straight ahead. So when the patient is looking straight in front, this is the nystagmus that occurs during that time. Then in the third degree nystagmus, it is stronger than first and second and is present even when patient looks in the direction of the slow component. So these are the three degrees of nystagmus. First is towards the fast component. Second, when the patient looks straight and third is towards the, even towards the slow uh, component. Then the second test is the fistula test. Fistula, as we already said, what is fistula? Fist is, fistula is the connection between the two structures. In the ear, usually this fistula, in this there is a perilymph fistula. There is leakage of fluid from the internal ear to the middle ear through oval and round windows. So in this fistula test, this is done to induce nystagmus by producing pressure in the external canal which are then transmitted to the inner ear or labyrinth. So in this fistula test, there is uh, pressure is created in the external ear that is then transmitted to the inner ear. And this increase in the pressure cause nystagmus or involuntary rhythmical movement of the eye. If there is a false negative fistula test, false negative fistula test, usually when condition like cholestitoma covers the site of the fistula, if the cholestitoma or it's a small uh, 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 growth or uh, structure formed by the deposits of the fat or cholesterol and this can uh, leads to when it covers the uh, site of the fistula what happens now the pressure is which is generated in the external ear cannot reach the inner ear this can give false negative fistula test even if the fistula is present, there won't be any result or it does it won't cause nystagmus. False positive fistula test is in diseases like congenital syphilis 
and Meniere's disease usually there is false positive fistula test. This is the uh, otoscope then we have the tube attached to it by which we can pump the air or increase the pressure in the external ear and if there is a fistula present it can cause nystagmus. So this is fistula test. Then the Romberg test. Romberg test uh, is done for about 30 seconds. Patients' feet are together and eyes are closed. Romberg test is performed to uh, find out if the patient's balance is present or if the coordination of the patient is good because first patient moves with the eyes open. With the eyes open, they can have a better contact or better information sensation. And then once the eyes are closed, usually the patient, um, their uh, alignment is not proper if they have problem in the uh, vestibular system. So if this is the feet together and then semi tendum and tendum. Tendum is like when two things are placed together. So this is done or side by side. One after. So this is we have a Romberg test to find out the movement or, or orientation or um, coordination of the patient with the eyes closed. Then the gait analysis. Gait analysis. Gait is the manner of the walking of the patient. So patient is asked to walk along a straight line in a straight line to a fixed point first with eyes open and then eyes closed. So if there is a problem in the balance, in the uh, cerebellum, in the uh, vestibular uh, uh, area, then we have problem in the gait also. The patient won't be able to walk straight in with the eyes closed. So these are the different uh, gait um, patterns. We have heel strike. These are known as the stance and then we have the uh, stance pattern of gait and swing pattern of the gait. In the stance pattern, if you see, all these have one foot on the ground all the time. So here in the heel strike, you have foot flat, mid stance, push off. These are the stance uh, pattern. And in this one foot is on the ground at all time. And then in this, usually we have the lift foot, uh, 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 so here. In this swing, the foot is raised or it's the swinging. So this is the swing mode of the gait. So all this patient is asked to walk in a straight line with the uh, from one point to another first with eyes open and then with the eyes closed. Past uh, pointing and falling test. Fast pointing, falling and slow component of nystagmus are all in the same direction. So usually fast pointing, falling and slow component are usually in the same direction. Uh, if the right if side is involved, all these are usually in the right side. If the left is on the left side. And pass pointing test is usually when uh, patient, first the doctor sit in front of the patient and they ask the patient with the uh, eyes open to attach the finger and then they lift the hand up and then touch the fingers. And then the doctor asks the patient to close the eyes and do the same thing again. And they, if they have a problem in coordination or they have any uh, vestibular or cerebellar dis disorders, usually they pass the uh, point. So that's the pass pointing test and all these are in the same direction. Pass pointing, falling and the slow component of nystagmus. Then the 
Hall Pike Maneuver or Positional Test. In this, the parameters of nystagmus are observed. Usually the parameters are the latency, duration, direction, fatigability. So in this, when we talk about the Hall Pike maneuver, it's the test which uh, determine different parameters of nystagmus. So here, what are the different parameters observed? It, latency. So in the peripheral and central, what happens? There is latent period in the peripheral of 2 to 20 seconds, but in the central disorders, there is no latency. Duration in peripheral less than one minute, in central is more than one minute. Direction of nystagmus in peripheral disorders, direction is fixed towards the undermost ear. Direction changing. In fatigability, there is fatigability present in peripheral no fatigability in the central. Some accompanying symptoms, there is severe vertigo present in peripheral, non or slight vertigo present. So all these are the different features that can differentiate by the Hall Pike maneuver, uh, whether they are central, peripheral or central disorder. So patient is first uh, from the sitting position, patient lies down and head is turned first to the right and then to the left and then doctor tells in which direction is the nystagmus present and what's the positioning of the eyes. Then the test of cerebellar dysfunction. A midline disease of the cerebellum causes wide base gait. Cerebellum, as I mentioned before, cause the problem in the gait. It can cause ataxia and problem in the gait. So a patient with uh, midline disease of the cerebellum, they have wide gait. They walk with the uh, feet apart, so they have wide base gait. Falling in any direction, inability to make sudden turns while walking, they have truncal ataxia, usually the trunk doesn't move when the patient moves, it kind of lays still. Then the asynergia, which is abnormal finger nose test. A synergia, abnormal finger nose test. Finger nose test, the, uh, the patient is asked to touch the finger and then nose. Here, finger and nose, so A synergia. So abnormal finger nose test. Dysmetria is an inability to control range of motion. Range of motion they is extended or decrease, so they have range of motion is not controlled. A diadocokinesia. This is a, it's a inability to perform rapid alternating movements. Like if a doctor asks the patient to do perform different alternating movements, there is inability to perform those rapid alternating movements like this here. All these, if they keep on doing like this rapid alternating or anything doctor asks them, they are not able to perform. So all these disorders are present in condition of midline cerebellar disorders. Asynergia, dysmetria and adiagokinesia. Then the other is rebound phenomena. Rebound phenomenon is inability to control movement of extremity when opposing force restraint is suddenly released. So if there is opposing force and that 
opposing force is removed, there is inability to control movement. That's rebound phenomena. All these are present in condition that cause midline problems of the cerebellum. These are all the tests performed when the uh, problem in the cerebellum is uh, expected and sometimes also uh, in the in, during the neurological examination, doctors ask the patient to walk in a straight line and so they can uh, check if the patient has wide gait or normal gait. They can do the finger nose testing and they ask the patient to do rapid alternating movements. This this all gives the idea if their cerebellar function is normal or not. So that was all about the uh, tests performed for the uh, central and peripheral vestibular disorder or to check the nystagmus. Thank you for watching scardia.com.